Solving chess tactics is, of course, a very crucial part to improvement. But there are so many books out there, so many puzzles to train from. Where do you start? Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a book and a method to solving tactics. And that is called the woodpecker method. Stick around to find out exactly what that is and how it can help you improve. So what exactly is the woodpecker method? Well, as the name suggests, it's a repetitive mode of training chess puzzles. The book written by Axel Smith and Hans Tickenen, both grandmasters, lays out exactly how to do the method and it gives you thousands of puzzles to work with to do this training for. But let's take a look inside the book and there are five steps of what the woodpecker method actually entails. So as you can see, there are five simple steps to this method. The first is that you are going to do as many chess puzzles as you can manage in four weeks or essentially a month. And of course you can do this with any set of puzzles from any book, but the authors have picked out ones that will really help with your pattern recognition. So this book really helps with this method if you want to try it out. So you're solving as many chess puzzles as you can in four weeks. Then step two, you're going to take a break and this break can range from a day to a week, but the idea is that you're not going to look at any of these puzzles or any chess puzzles in that period. Step number three, you're going to repeat the first process, but you're going to half the time. So if you spend four weeks in step one, took you four weeks to solve as many puzzles, or you chose a select amount of puzzles, like a thousand, now you're going to half that time and try to do it within two weeks, or whichever time suits you. After this, you're basically going to repeat the steps, you're going to take a break, come back to the puzzles, solve the exact same ones again, halving the time. So the method has been completed once you have solved all of your puzzles in one day or after your seventh cycle. So again, you're doing the exact same puzzles. Even if it's a thousand of them, you're doing the exact same puzzles in a certain period of time. Now, you know a method works when the author themselves used it and got excellent results. In this case, Hans Tikkanen did this exact same woodpecker method and within a period of months, he achieved three GM norms, crossed the 2500 rating barrier, of course, became a grandmaster, and even later peaked to 2600. Using this method, he took a thousand puzzles and did his woodpecker method until he got to solve them all in a day. So I think it's fair enough to say it works. There are three levels, easy, intermediate, and difficult, Let's take a look at some of the puzzles from each chapter. So as you can see, there are many, many puzzles, 1,128 to be exact. And uh, we have easy, intermediate, advanced. The authors do mention that this opens the books to a wider audience. Uh, even if you find yourself in the intermediate level, you can still use the easy exercises as a good warm up. And uh, yeah, you've got a lot of intermediate exercises to choose from. The advanced puzzles, well, the authors actually mentioned that if you're going to be doing these advanced exercises, then you're probably working towards the Grandmaster title. So let's just leave it at that. But uh, let's take a look at one of the easy exercises. This is the first one of the book. Take a minute to pause here, see if you can find it and how quickly you can find it. Because do remember that speed becomes quite an important factor in this method. And if you found the move rook takes h2, then you are correct. This is a nice sacrifice. The white king takes back and rook h8 is checkmate. Of course, since we are on forward chess, you can use the puzzle feature, uh, our tactics trainer, to test yourself out with these puzzles, which means you won't have access to the answers, but you can also build up a rating and uh, go back to the puzzles that you got incorrect. 
Moving on to the intermediate section. Of course, most of the puzzles in the book are in this section. Uh, they are basically a combination. Some of them are a little easier, some of them are complicated. It's a mix. But what you will notice is that a lot of these games are from world champions. So you are finding moves that maybe world champions have missed. So do keep this in mind. Uh, take a moment to pause. This is white to play. How can white win this game? If you found the really cool sacrifice, queen takes g6, then you are correct. Because after black captures with the pawn, we just push and this is going to be an inevitable checkmate. After captures, captures. And it was a really cool little uh, checkmate. Quite a few moves. They do range from, you know, one or two moves to a little bit more of a lengthy solve. Uh, just depending on your position. But these are fun to do. Of course, they do progress in difficulty. And let's take a look at one of the puzzles in the advanced chapter. So let's take a look at one of our advanced puzzles. Now, these ones you probably want to spend a little bit more time on. And it's not always a cut and dry solution. You have to think of the best ways forward for the other side and just keep going until it's completely winning. This is basically what the authors want you to do. You shouldn't stop before it's time. So in this position here, we have white to play. Of course, you can see the black king has a castle. Black maybe has some pressure on the king side, but if our opponent's king is uncastled, then we have a nice rook on the file. The logical way to move forward is to try to open up that file and just expose the king a little bit more. So if you want to take a moment, pause, find the correct solution for white, but find the entire solution, not just one move. If you found the first move, e6, then you are correct. Now the actual solution will have a lot of analysis here, but we're just going to look at the main line. And that is black captures, d takes e6. Now we've sacrificed the pawn, but the king is open. So bishop e5, thank you very much. We have a check. Black can try to block this check with c6, the only logical way. And now a very nice move from white, bishop c7. Hitting, let's get our arrows going, hitting the d8 square, rook d8 is threatened. And of course, this knight is also threatened. So black has only one response really, which is bishop d7, blocking the rook and blocking the checkmate. So we capture the knight. Thank you very much. It looks like white's completely winning. At some point, you probably might have thought, okay, this is the end of the solution. Let's stop. But we still have some hanging pieces. Of course, if black captures our bishop on b5, We'll just capture queen takes b7, hitting the rook, hitting the bishop, and uh, this is just completely winning. But instead, black has this nice little resource, queen g4. Is this working? Well, of course, we can't just capture the queen, because after capturing, the rook captures back. Now we do have two pieces hanging, our bishop on b5, our knight on h4, and black can try to equalize or Black will actually be a little bit better here. So let's go back. What should white do instead here? Well, you need to decline the queen trade and execute another attack. And that's why white has a nice little move, queen d3, hitting the bishop on d7. So if you take my knights or my bishop, I'll take your bishop. Thank you. Uh, black can try to block with knight d5. And now the final move that is given in the variation. If you've come this far, then you are correct. Full marks. And that is rook e4. Hitting the queen, defending the knight. And in the next move, we can save our bishop. So, of course, this is a quick one because I know this position. I've worked through the book. Uh, but, of course, the others, you, you'll probably be spending a lot more time. Uh, that's why you're giving yourself four weeks. 
other cool thing to mention about this book, they're very thorough. I mean, there's this whole chapter on a summary of tactical motifs. So they will basically be showing you what you're looking for. You've got games here, you've got um, little puzzles of uh, what will be expected from you uh, to solve the positions. Because some of them are checkmate, but not all of them are. Sometimes you're just getting a better position. And uh, they also give you uh, a lot of kind of background of the method and the positions used and general introduction. Uh, they talk about the world champions as well and really nicely have set out the world champions list in order for you. And uh, there's just so much uh, to read through over here. But of course, if you want to delve straight into the puzzles, you can do just that. So in summary, the woodpecker method is an excellent way to train your intuitive understanding of chess tactics and pattern recognition. And probably you'll also be doing this blunders. You'll be better in time travel. There are lots of benefits to this. So either try it out with your own set of puzzles or get the Woodpecker Method book on Forward Chess. We have linked it down below. If you have any other recommendations for books that you want us to talk about, let us know in the comments. Until next time.